Hi folks, we need to engrave 600 of our clamp handles with our Saunders Machine Works logo. We did these last time on the 440, one at a time and a little fixture with a toggle clamp. Worked great, let's find a better way. Uh, let's automate a 440 or let's at least try to. I am super excited about this. This is why I got into all of this stuff. It was Arduinos, automation, motor, sensors, machining, and there's gotta be a better way to do this because it's perfect. It's a perfect example. We have these laser cut now. We used to plasma cut them, um, and then they're powder coated, so they come in pretty uniform shape. They look really nice. So um, one of the biggest things I wanted to share with you guys in this sort of introduction video to this project was uh, Tom Lipton did a video on making the four jaw king thing and he really emphasized starting on paper. I never used to do anything on paper because my drawing skills are horrendous. Um, and I suspect many of you may agree. If you, are, if you have uh, talented artistic or drawing skills, God bless you, I'm very envious of you. That combined with I think my youth and my love for computers, I would always just dive into to CAD. And it's so cool when you can import McMaster parts and draw stuff up. And Tom is totally right. It's the wrong, a lot of times at least, the wrong thing to do. And I had a bunch of traveling time over the last month, so on planes and car rides, I just started sketching. Um, I did this for another project as well, which I'm excited to share soon. And um, this is kind of what I came up with, and I wanted to walk you through the thought process and sort of share where I am with this project, and I would love some feedback, and also just give you, uh, you know, give you guys a starting point. So the first thing I think I think that I thought of was when I see, uh, press lines, or what do they call stamping die, like the old, I can't remember the Waterbury Ferrell uh, transfer presses that are moving sheet metal from station to station. So my original thought was, you know, something like this, where you would have a, a strip or a bar being fed in and out, picking one up, moving it over. Um, when it's in that position, it could do the engraving and then come back. Um, I actually really liked that. and. Uh, I'm not smart enough to envision its shortcomings, and so I mocked it up here in Fusion 360. And to be honest, this didn't take that much time. The idea is you'd have a motor mounted here, which would act, which would rotate this arm. So when it's sort of all the way back, like here, it would pick one up from a vertical stack. It would move it all the way forward um, to like here, where it would do. Actually, you know what? Sorry, it would have to move it to like right here, where it would be underneath the spindle. So it would pause there, would do the engraving, then it would continue to rotate forward um, at the furthest point, dropping the part down through a chute. So get rid of the part and then come all the way back, pick up another one, you know, whoops, go, <laughs> go to the engraved spot here, drop the part, rotate through, um, come back. So uh, thank you to a, a viewer, Tim. Tim is a smart guy who's helped us out on some stuff. And, uh, I had been, also been thinking about the other way to do this, which was a rotary table, which we're about to talk about, like you see right here. And Tim's short answer was way better, way more simple uh, of a solution. The idea here is you've got a large platter and it just rotates around and it'll do the engraving, it'll pick up from the stack here, rotate around, do the engraving, come over to here, dump. So this was my first sort of sketch. I know that these are kind of pathetic, but it, it actually worked. That's what's amazing. And I started thinking, okay, if I've got this big disc, um, I got to measure the enclosure opening on my 440 to fit that in. I actually thought about a big donut that would actually sort of weave through the 442 panels, but that got complicated. And so measuring the clearance where you put, start putting stuff, and I quickly got to my third sketch. Um, and this is what's so great about this. It's so much faster to do these little sketches and then move on to the next one than it is um, the time you spend in CAD. So the third one, I really started to like. I've got the engraving point here at 12 o'clock. It rotates here to like seven or eight o'clock and does a drop through a feed chute, uh, picks up a stack back here and then rotates back through. I started to think about, okay, the rotary table has to be mounted on a plate and then the plate can come out and be, can extend down to the floor with some posts that'll give it the stability. Because back here, where the stack is, you're gonna have a fair amount of weight. This is only, you know, this is only 15 clamps and that probably weighs five pounds or so. And I've got hundreds to do. 
I don't know how many we'll put in at a time, but so that's a, one of the thoughts I've got now is the torque of the motor to rotate around and the weight of the stack on the six o'clock position of this whole thing. Um, so I started making my list, you know, do I want to use a stepper to rotate? I've got, I think this is one of our old Tormach steppers before we upgraded to the Series 3, uh, which we did a video on moving large steppers. So I thought, well, hey, that's a maybe an easy way to do it. And I get some positional control uh, with a stepper and I could use a proximity sensor or some sort of a switch to detect if I think I've lost position, like if this had skipped a step. So basically it thinks it moves 40 degrees and if it doesn't also trip a switch, then flag an alarm that the operator needs to take a look that there's something wrong. Weight of the stock, uh, again, sitting down in that position. When we get to the engraved position over here at 12 o'clock, we're gonna use one of these eBay electromagnets, I think. Um, so we'll hook that up into an Arduino to the, the rotary, the, the platen I'm hoping here, this you know should hold it somewhat securely. Stepper motors have a good amount of torque when they're idle, but I figure there has to be some amount of slop in order to pick up the part and drop it. So we'll use this electromagnet to just hopefully hold it down and that'll just lock it in place, I'm hoping. And then easy to release it, dropping into a feed hopper, no big deal. Um, the last comment or two comments is uh, something like a Teflon strip. Well, here, let me hop into the Fusion model here. So if I hide this ring um, on top of this subplate here, some like Teflon or something that has a really low uh, slippery, you know, low coefficient of friction, that'll gonna help it rotate and deal with the fact that there may be some weight on it, I hope. And then lastly, and this is so cool, Tormach makes this, uh, what do they call it, USB IO kit. It gives me four relays that I can hook into an Arduino or directly into uh, like things like this uh, electromagnet and they're controllable in PathPilot with M code. So at first I thought I was going to kind of have to hack this machine and do some kind of, I had this idea of like build, putting a second monitor on the controller and using that monitor with some light sensors that are glued to the second monitor to look to whether certain things are in certain positions. but. This just made it so friggin' elegant. I'm super excited. I honestly didn't even know Tormach had this, which is kind of funny. Here's the Fusion model. Uh, this is not necessarily final, but I wanted to bring you guys in again early in this project. So the ring will go on top and it'll again, rotate around, pick a part up right here, uh, go 180 degrees here, it'll stop. The electromagnet will turn on, the spindle will come down, oops, and engrave it. It'll rotate over here to, you can see, eight o'clock, it'll drop it down into a box, a feed, you know, just a hopper to hold the engraved parts, come back, pick another one up. This plate here, I think I'm gonna have some riser posts to hold the stack of parts. I've gotta think about the, the, right now I've got this machine with like a little bit of a, I think a draft angle or taper to hopefully get them to feed in. Well, that's gonna be one of the big questions that I've gotta deal with. Um, and then it was super cool too. I could just download the Tormach 440 model and put this thing in there and, and take a look at how it fits. The, this plate here will actually mount to the 440 table, but then in the back corner, you know, sort of back here, we'll have posts going down to the floor again to help support the weight of the stack. And yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Next steps up is to spend a little bit more time thinking about the design and the stack and read some of the comments from you guys because I, I am very interested in, in feedback, but we're gonna make this work somehow or another. And then we'll plasma cut some parts, machine some parts, get the electronics Arduino going and uh, see where this goes, folks. So uh, thank you for your support. Take care, see you soon.